first, though. Do you think the UK should consider banning circumcision? Religious groups have condemned a bill in Iceland's parliament that would ban circumcision for non-medical reasons. The draft law would impose a six-year prison term on anyone guilty of removing part or all of the child's sexual organs, arguing the practice violates the child's rights. While Jewish and Muslim leaders have called the bill an attack on religious freedom. Iceland would be the first European country to ban the procedure. My question to you this morning is, do you think we should follow their example? Do you think the UK should consider banning circumcision? Or is it a ridiculous thing to suggest? 03459 455 555. One man who would like us to do just that is Mike Buchanan from Bedford, who leads the Justice for Men and Boys Party. He'd like to ban all non-medically essential circumcision. Good morning to you, Mike. Yes, good morning, Jonathan. And, good morning. Uh, may I say, first of all, thank you very much for being the only BBC presenter in the country that openly debates this issue. Well, it's a pleasure. We like to have frank discussions on this programme, and today's one of those days. So, why do you want to see non-religious circumcision banned? Well, number one, it's illegal under the Offences Against the Person Act, being at least actual bodily harm and probably grievous bodily harm. Um, it causes um, it causes uh, considerable physical damage. The whole point of it is to remove ninety percent of the nerves of the nerve endings in the in the penis, which are in the foreskin, so as to reduce adult men, men's um, pleasure during sex and make them more faithful to their wives. It's a human rights violation under human rights convention. <clears throat> it's it's unethical, and all male genital mutilation is more injurious than most female genital mutilation. But the state and the criminal justice system um, are concerned only with female genital mutilation because males in this state are subhuman. Isn't it, though, and let me just present you with some of the counter-arguments. We'll hear from uh, Rabbi Jonathan Romain in just a second, but, and I don't, don't want to, uh, to try and predict what he's going to say, but the arguments are always, it's more hygienic, um, if you do it to the child when the child is very, very young, they don't remember anyway, so it doesn't traumatise them. You don't generally hear people, men who have been circumcised, complaining about it later in life. In fact, many men who are circumcised seem to be quite grateful for it. So who's actually got the issue with this? I, I, well, I, I mean, first of all, uh, the, the hygiene um, question, um, and it's something actually we hear that more from Muslims than we hear from, from Jews, I have to say. Um, um, it takes only soap and water to clean the foreskin. It takes takes a fraction of a second. Um, so it, it's completely nonsensical. There, there are dirtier parts of the bodies that, that are cleaned with soap and water. Um, and as, as for the argument that it's done at, a, at an early stage, well, I guess then if we have a religion that, that I don't know, chops off a left foot, um, at an early age, you know, the children, the child won't remember it. it, it it's, it's a devastating, um, painful thing for, for a baby. And we know that cortisol levels, which, which is the stress reaction hormone, are raised for months afterwards. You, the you compare, day, you compare it to day, cutting a... Hang on one second. You compare it to cutting a child's foot off. Uh, surely there no, is an no, argument well, to suggest that actually the foreskin is considered by many to be a, a an excess piece of skin anyway that doesn't serve any purpose. Um, it, you can't compare it well, to something as fundamental as a foot. Well, I, I'm, I'm afraid, to, to Jonathan, no, I mean, the, the foot comparison, OK, I'll give you that. But 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 there are functions of the foreskin, um, you, know, in, you know, in sex and, and in protection and, and so on. You know, and, and if you go back to a religious thing, you know, something that religious people can never answer is why would God have given have, have given you know, male male babies foreskins, and then demand that they be cut off. So it's kind of saying that God created something with the objective of painfully removing it afterwards. That's not a that's not a perfect creation, is it? It doesn't make sense. And I'll, I'll, if, um, if I can just stay on the religious front for, front for a moment, which I'm sure the rabbi will talk about, um, uh, um, as well as as well as circumcision, I can give you at least six areas where the Torah, the the you know the the traditional Jewish book. Um, uh, regards as punishable, punishable by death, cheating on your husband, Leviticus 2010, fornicating, but only if you're female, Deuteronomy 2221, homosexuality, Leviticus 2013, blasphemy, Leviticus 2416, insulting one's parents, Exodus 2117, disobeying one's parents, Deuteronomy 2118 to 21, and that's for, and that's from a leaflet, Jonathan, which which uh, we have on our website. Um, um, from, from the organisation Jews Against Circumcision. 
Well, let's bring Rabbi Jonathan Romain in. Good morning to you. Thanks for coming on, Rabbi. Um, do you want to just explain from a religious perspective why it is why it is essential that Jewish boys are circumcised? Yes, well, it's, it's partly a religious argument, but not just a religious argument. In other words, um, as it, it certainly goes right back to the Bible, where circumcision was a mark of identity, where it was Judaism was sort of the Jewish heritage was passed on, so to speak, right from the word go um, by parents. But of course, it's, it, it, by itself, it's not enough, because obviously um, you can have Jews who are not circumcised for whatever reason, if uh, they've got uh, hemophilia or whatever, and they just simply can't have it, and it doesn't make them any less Jewish. So in other words, it's part of Judaism, um, but it's also a very hygienic aspect. And I'm saying that not just as a rabbi, but as a bloke. Um, in fact, uh, as a bloke who is circumcised, I have no memory whatsoever about my circumcision. Uh, to say it was devastating or painful, well, yes, uh, I can tell you, because I've been at circumcisions, uh, a child gives a bit of a yelp at the time, but only a minor yelp. A bit of a yelp. Yeah, I, I remember speaking to uh, a colleague of mine who is Jewish, and he said that he had to leave the room when his little boy was circumcised because the scream he let out was so blood-curdling, um, it shocked him to the core. <laughs> well, um, you know, number one, it's because it was his son, uh, and you always feel it's different when it's your son. I can tell you that as, as a dad of four boys. Uh, number two, the child literally goes back on the breast, the mother's breast, has a nice feed, sleeps it off, and is fine two hours later. And to be honest with you, if it wasn't the case, then we would have abandoned it centuries ago. I mean, circumcision is about 3,000 years old. It's one of the longest running medical procedures. If you know anything about Jewish parents, they're neurotic about their children's health. And I can tell you, as a Jewish dad, as can anybody, if we thought for one second it was injurious, physically, medically, psychologically, it would have gone, just like with tons but, of others. But, but, but can, I just, can we just look at this a slightly different way? If, if a different religion, for sake of argument, suggested that you had to take a red-hot poker, put it in a fire, and then literally brand a baby boy on his thigh burn his flesh in order to give him a mark that would stay with him for the rest of his life, albeit after a few years he wouldn't remember it anyway, would you suggest that that should also be allowed? Because isn't this comparable? I'm not entirely sure, because remember that circumcision um, has been adopted in vast parts of the world. I mean, we're not just talking about Africa, but also Australia and, um, and America for precisely for hygienic reasons. Now, of course, you can be perfectly hygienic without being circumcised, but there's no doubt that it, that it can assist. I and mean, I've just come back from South Africa. If you've been there yourself, you might have seen some giant billboards um, because they have a big problem with AIDS. And there's these billboards with a woman looking directly at you and saying suggestively, I like it condomized and circumcised. In other words, this is part of the official government campaign to reduce sexual, uh, the transmission of sexual disease. So, in Hang on a minute. Are you suggesting that if you're uncircumcised, are you suggesting that if you're uncircumcised, you're more likely to spread AIDS? No. What I'm saying is that the government uh, thinks that one way of combating AIDS, not by the only means, is is the. Oh, yes, but I mean, all kinds of governments in different countries have all kinds of odd odd ideas that they try and drum into their people, don't they? Yes, and, uh, you know, and some of them are defensible and some of them are not. But what I'm saying is that circumcision isn't just a Jewish or a Muslim ritual. It is recognised around the world as having health benefits. That's the point. It's rubbish. Not just a marker. It has a knock-on effect, which is why people voluntarily do it, and which is, for instance, why the royal family in the 1930s, 40s and 50s oh. all circumcised their children because it was considered to have beneficial effects. Mike, you want to come back in? I can hear you shouting yes. rubbish. <clears throat> Absolutely incredible. We, 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 had, um, we, 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 uh, we organised international conferences on men's issues, and we have one in uh, July in London. But at our 2016 um, conference in London, um, we had a guy called Tim Hammond speak, um, a Californian anti-circumcision activist, and he, and he gave an update on, the, on, on, on his um, global survey of circumcision harm. Um, and we, we, we have that video on our, on our, on our website. And the, the, I mean, it is just toe-curling, the, the, the damage 
that is wrought by by male circumcision and in, in Africa you say the, the, you say that though Mike I mean I've I've never in all my years spoken to a man on a discussion like this who's called in to say, I'm circumcised and it's ruined my life. I mean, normally all the calls well, we get from men well, who are circumcised, they, they all really like it. And they say, yes, I've, I like it. I've had the same done to my son and I've never had any complaints. All of my partners like it, etc. Because Because people are taught to, to, to give value to it, Jonathan. It's not... And they have nothing to compare it with. I go back to the point about nerve endings. 90% of the nerve endings in the penis are in the foreskin. So, so the, the entire point of circumcision, and we know this from, from Moses Maimonides, the rabbi in the 13th century, the whole point was, was to reduce Jewish men's pleasure dur- during sex. Now, if someone is circumcised as, as, um, as a baby or a youth, they have, nothing to, they have nothing to compare it with. But it certainly leads, you know, we know to a good deal of erectile dysfunction. It's, but, uh, you know, Jewish men, well, circumcised men are shamed out of, out of, out of, uh, you know, out of revealing the truth about all this but you'll hopefully get some callers today from you know there are certainly plenty of men who feel extremely angry about this and there have been a number of well documented suicides from men who've been so who've been so psychologically traumatized when they realise what's been done to them in the name of a religion that, that many of them no longer follow but isn't it the case that what you've never had you don't miss anyway well then well but, uh, Jonathan that's an argument for for amputating any part of uh, of the baby isn't it well, well, not really, because if you, mean, if you remove you the baby, we go... Yeah, yes, you can. Sorry, Jonathan, you come back in. Yeah, I mean, just on a purely factual, I mean, obviously, you know, your other speaker and I are going to disagree, but I think anybody listening can just... will know people who've been circumcised for medical reasons in, in adulthood, and none of them, but none of them, ever complain that the sex after circumcision was any worse... Uh, than before. I'm not going to say sorry, but that's it's nonsense. necessarily that's better. nonsense. We have, it was, um, sorry, it's not an Jonathan, issue. And frankly, if, if that was the case, people would never allow themselves to be circumcised and, and it would have been written off the statute books years and years ago. I mean, Jonathan, you know, they, there may be they, one or two individuals who have problems, but the vast majority do not. Otherwise, it would have been, you know, Jews themselves would have abolished circumcision. Um, it, it would just, we, we would just not allow it. That, that, that's, that's just that's just ridiculous. They they do not, you know, they, they, you know, they, these are eight days old. How can a baby allow it? I mean, this is just an obscene presentation of it. Just, just, know, just, there just, are just, plenty just of obscene. adults who have been circumcised, circumcised in later life and who never complain thereafter. But, but, they, the, the, but the adults... We, 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 have videos of men, okay. we have videos of men circumcised as adults who are very, very angry, because they know damn well that they, they have far less sensation... You're talking about adults. 10 people, I'm talking about 10 million. Oh, that's a difference. OK, listen, I, I want to thank you both very much indeed for outlining both sides of the argument. I'm going to see what some of my listeners think, but thank you very much indeed. Mike Buchanan from Bedford leads the Justice for Men and Boys Party. He'd like to ban all non-medically essential circumcision. Thank you as well to Rabbi Jonathan Remain, who's minister at the Maidenhead Synagogue in Berkshire. Craig texts to say, if my body was to be mutilated, I would at least like it to be my decision. No baby or child should have to go through that, religious or not, unless, of course, it's for medical reasons, says Craig. Thank you. Mary says, both of my sons were circumcised at eight days old. They gave a small cry and that was all. They're now grown up and they're glad they had it done. Um, Dan in Luton. Text to say, JVS, um, I think non-medical circumcision is sick and twisted. Ban it. The religious aspect of cutting off part of the human body is sadistic and evil, says Dan. Thank you. Dean is in Luton. Good morning to you, Dean. Morning, Joe, yes. Morning. What are your thoughts on circumcision then? Would you like us to follow Iceland's lead and consider banning it? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I've got a bit of experience of this. My ex-partner um, was Nigerian. And when she was seven and a half months pregnant, she told me that she would get, if it was a boy, what would happen? Because we didn't know the sex, that she would have him circumcised with or without my permission. Really? And what, what was her motivation for that? It's, it's cultural. We went through the whole discussion and it was just for cultural reasons. So what's her culture? Uh, she's Nigerian. Right. So in, in Nigeria, <laughs> they do it? They do. They do. So that, that set me on to a little... Uh, investigation on, on the internet and that there are actual stories of men who feel like they've lost a limb through 
circumcision because they've been circumcised without their permission. And there's, there's actual reports on that. And even Sigmund Freud um, did a report on this as well. Ultimately, most people who have been circumcised who will be listening to this programme will probably be thinking to themselves, well, what's the issue? Um, it's never impacted my life. I don't remember when it was done because I was a baby. What is the big issue here? What was the big issue for you as a father? Uh, no one in my family has been circumcised. Uh, we're generally none, none of us are religious, so we're just, you know, we are as we are. Um, but I liken it to, obviously, um, there's a, a big cultural thing with FGM uh, within the um, African community. And to me, I liken circumcision to the same as FGM. You're still mutilating a part of your body. But it's less inv but it's less invasive, isn't it? It, it? it is, but it's still mutilation. That's not how we were crea created. We were born with a foreskin. But then isn't piercing a child's ears <sighs> mutilation as well? And yet many parents do that, particularly to little girls, baby no, girls. That's re that is reversible. You take the earrings out, it heals up. You can't put back your foreskin. Once it's gone, it's gone. But it's just a little piece of skin, isn't it? The, the, no, the boys no, don't miss and men don't miss because they they don't ever remember having had it. That's a that's a fair comment. Um, however, it's there for a reason, Jonathan. It, it's not just. I mean, there's, there's people say it's for cleanliness. But that's why they're, they're circumcised. But there's, again, there's reports saying it's actually cleaner with a foreskin because it keeps out bacteria. It helps protect. The, the, the tip of the penis, if I can say that, without, you know, if you've, you're have you circumcised, you, you, you're exposed all the time to the inside of bacteria, germs, etc., inside your underwear. All right. Listen, Dean, thank you very much indeed for your call this morning. David is in Brickett Wood. Good morning to you, David. Good morning, Jonathan. Good morning. I gather you're in favour of circumcision. Why, why is that, yes. David? Well, apart from that, I'm, I'm Jewish. Uh, there is a medical proof uh, of the cleanliness for a circumcised penis is cleaner than an uncircumcised one for whatever other reason there are well, can i can i just say as a as a man who hasn't been circumcised mm. i find it rather offensive that there is an allegation that those of us that haven't been circumcised are in some way unhygienic and dirty yeah, I, I don't mean that offensive to you or anybody to have an uncircumcised penis well why say so it then why say it as a justification I, then? I, I can for a simple reason that uh, from the books that I read growing up, and we're not talking about religious books, is they said there is a fungus that goes under the foreskin that for uncircumcised men, this has to be cleaned on a regular basis. This is what I read when I was about 13, 14. Or so well, has violence. it ever occurred to you that maybe that was a very outdated book it written by be. someone who'd only ever encountered very dirty men? Hey, listen, I'm, I'm sorry, all I can do is read a, a remember from the biology books I read at school, not... Uh, a storybook, a biology book. Uh, the fact is, for it has been practiced by Jews and by Muslims for thousands of years. It is something that... Uh, but slavery went on for a very long time and right. was justified through religion, and we got to a point, thank God, where we recognised that it needed to be abolished. Are there not sometimes uh, where we, we start to question what a religion dictates to us? Uh, to a degree, I, I understand that, and I can accept that, what your point is. But uh, as uh, a practicing Jew, but not a religious one, I understand that uh, non-Jewish people will turn around and say, oh, I don't like circumcisions, it's wrong. All I know is the royal family, from what I understand, have all, always are circumcised. And it is something, this is a practice that, as far as I am aware, and it can only be my opinion, yeah. that leaves... Uh, it, it is a less likely to have any problems. Uh, it doesn't affect anyone's sex drive. Okay. All right, but David. And I, as I said, I can't talk for other people, but for me, I would find it morally offensive if we were told that it can no longer be done. Okay, thank you very much indeed, David. Good morning.